Hi, I'm Scott, and it's Azure Friday. I'm talking to Stefan from Azure Websites. Hey. So I'm looking at my dashboard, and you see I've got 17 websites going. And one of the things that strikes me is that uh, while I've got subscription and location and mode, nothing here says that's an ASP.NET site or that's a PHP site. Yeah. It doesn't even say whether it's Windows or not. That, that's correct. Rest assured, underneath the hood, um, these are all running on uh, what is effectively IIS 8 on server 2012. Um, at this time, but uh, to your earlier point, that's absolutely correct because ultimately we support a variety of app frameworks, all of which can be hosted and run out of IES. Mm -hmm. So that includes, you know, old school things like classic ASP, um, and includes the newer frameworks, Node.js, and then you know the traditional ASP.NET, PHP frameworks are all supported, and then also again, uh, you know, we're always. Uh, sort of futzing around in the background and seeing additional things we can add. A Python, for example, that's also available. Mm. You can uh, put in the Python bits and run a Python site. So, yeah, there's, it, that's very much so an important point, which is if you can run the app framework today on the, on the Windows platform, you can probably run it and host it here on Azure websites. So that's interesting because if I have a PHP site and I've got it running on IIS on my local machine, I can probably get it up in yes. Azure, which means that monitoring, scale, reserved, shared, all those features all the, just all happen. The, yes, everything that, well, pretty much, let's put it this way, 99.9% .9 of the features that you see there are completely app framework agnostic. Mm -hmm. There are one or two little tweaks here and there where, yeah, because we, quote unquote, own the .NET framework, we can do some little syntactical sugar and tricks here and there, but the vast, vast majority of everything you see here, it's, it's completely agnostic. Mm -hmm. so, so we wanted to prove that. I haven't right. actually I haven't shown yep. you this, but I wanted to prove that uh, to myself. So what I've got here is a, a little app uh, called All in One Test. Um, I've got a deployment file, and we talked about that in the deployment uh, talk. But I'll just show you what that looks like, so you don't get surprised. And all it says is the project is in the source folder, okay? And inside of source, I've got. A classic ASP, just yeah. to prove the, that I could do it. I was actually surprised that that worked. PHP, just JS files, actually Node, yeah. static HTML, Razor, Web Forms. Uh, what I wanted to look at is the is the web config, because this was really interesting to me. Even if I'm running a PHP app or a Node app, Correct. why do I need a web config, and what is that for? Yep. So yeah, great question. Um, remember, the web config file, really at the end of the day, it's, it contains configuration information mm -hmm. that can be used by both IIS as well as um, you know, traditional ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. And the way you can sort of think of that in your mind is you see very uh, all the way up here at the very top, there's this closing element for system.web. That's indicative of configuration information that's very ASP.NET specific. Okay. But once you get into system.web server, and so it's that extra server that's, that's the hint, now you're talking about configuration that IIS knows about. And at that point, you can be putting in information, you know, maybe you're configuring IP security or request filtering, which has nothing to do with specific app frameworks. It's, it's just an IIS behavior. Okay, so system.web, I wouldn't even need that section on a node or a PHP application. Correct. And you can see here that on system.web server, We've got a reference to IIS node that's going to run. That's actually going to, that tells it, hey, this is how you go out and you're, you're going to run Node.js. So then that makes me guess, and I won't, I won't save this, but let's say that I was just maybe doing that one file. I could probably have a web config that looked something real basic. I mean, just configuration, yep. I lost one. I was going to say, yeah, you lost the top level tag, but and, yes, but exactly. E or even less. Yep, okay. correct. So that, when I put that up here, and here's the uh, thing, Super Azure Friday, uh, again, nothing in here referencing uh, that it is doing this, and I'll just hit refresh and run it again. And what I've got up here is classic ASP, I'll open that into its own tab, ASP.NET, a Razor file by itself, that makes me wonder, this is now kind of a, a hybrid app. This is all kind of living in the same space. Yeah, so uh, underneath the hood, the, the, you know, the easiest way to think about it is remember, at the very core, we are still running IIS. Again, some modifications uh, that are you know, sort of built on it and around it. So from the point of view of like running a request, right? the HTTP request lands on IIS, 
It always ends up in a worker process, which is you know part of where we're tracking things like CPU and memory. Mm -hmm. And then from there, what actually happens is dependent upon how the different frameworks are integrated into IIS. Mm -hmm. So for example, you're running PHP, we all know that uses CGI, or specifically in our case, the fast CGI implementation on Windows. So really, this page that we're seeing right here, there's a CGI bin process off to the side that got spooled up as a child of that worker process. And we said, here, go you know, run hello, uh, hello world.php. And then in a similar vein, Node.js is hosted in a similar way, right? So there are extra executables running in the background. And then other things like classic ASP and ASP.NET, they work the way that we've always known it in IS. They're running inside of the worker process. But again, because of the fact that we're, you know, we're bringing web hosting, it's a platform as a service offering, you don't have to sit there and worry about like, oh man, how am I going to go ahead and like wire up this PHP version to IS? It's like it's there. It's you can go to the control panel, select the options you want for the different framework versions. We'll make sure the right binaries are actually showing up um, down on the file system, and then you get to just concentrate about writing and running your app. That brings up an interesting point. So forgetting about the web.config, which actually didn't have a lot of hacks in it, I didn't have to make. I didn't have to hack that together. Correct. I just put the files in the folder. Yep. So you're saying I could just say an index.php and have it in the folder and it'll just run. Yes, that's correct. I don't have to go and tell anyone about it. Correct. And like we said here, um, there's also the sort of you know first class support. In the case of PHP, we pre-installed different versions that you can go out and select. And you know, we don't go into it here, but some of our more adventurous customers. You know there's PHP 5.5 out there. Some of them will be like, oh, to hell with that. I'm just, they, they literally, they will hack up the config files. Mm. Go tell us, no, use these other versions of the PHP binaries. They'll go throw it into the bin directory, and then they'll, they'll go run a version of PHP that we don't necessarily have already pre-installed on our servers. Interesting. And if you saw in the uh, David Ebo videos where we talked about custom, custom deployment scripts, you really can do whatever you want. If there's another uh, executable that you need, or if you want to have a specific version of Node, yep. there are ways that you can bring that in yeah, and run that. Yeah, bring basically bring your own framework and, and hook it up, and we'll run it. And that's okay. Yes, like totally, th this totally cool. This Frankenstein's monster that I've kind of deployed here isn't breaking any rules on editors. It's, it's not breaking any rules, and in fact, you know, anecdotally, we that's one of what you built with a little more uh, bells and whistles is one of the standard functional and, and regression tests that we run every time internally. We just we basically have a site with every known uh, framework that we support, and one of the basic things is like, dude, oh. you know, every hour, every day, does that still work? Did did somebody check something in that would have broken that? So yeah, it's absolutely central um, to Azure websites. Well, you've made me feel bad about my hello world. I'm going to get your application because it sounds better. Hey, it's Azure Friday. 